Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. So working at the bottom of this fourth pass today, I'm going to be working where there's a flower coming up in the foreground. Oh, pardon me. Overlapping over the ocean bit here. So there's a leaf sort of here. You can kind of see the outline of it showing. And I don't think I'll get to any of the actual petals of the flower part. Yeah. But, uh, we will see what we get done today. So. Yeah. Looking forward to the weekend. Because, uh husband and I are going to go to the dinner theater the next town over. It's nice because um, his workplace, they they buy tables at a lot of galas and things like events like that and the employees get to go and the uh, plus ones get to take turns as to who goes <laughs> depending on who's available and yeah if there's enough space. So this time it's my turn. <laughs> so yeah, we went to the dinner theater last year, I believe. It was fun. They did a, a comedy show. Yeah, it was quite amusing. Yeah, they had like, it was set around a lake that was, a, that was called Moose Bottom Lake rather than Moose Head Lake. Yeah. So they'd always answer the, the phone on it, you know, hello, Moose Bottom Lake. No, we're the other end of the moose. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, it was fun. And uh, one of the actors, she was in a walking boot. Um, she had a cast and then they had just taken a cast off to go to the walking boot. And uh, yeah, the guy who was um, inter introducing us the night, the MC, I guess, he, uh, he said, yeah, you know, when we say break a leg, we usually don't mean it literally, but yeah, she had been in, I think, a biking accident or something, and yeah, had broken her leg, but still managed to be in the play, so yeah, what a trooper. <laughs> but yeah, they said this year is going to be a murder mystery, so that should be fun. Yeah, you get dinner and a show, it's always nice. Yeah, last year, it was still cold enough that they were, that town was having a um, contest where they parked um, a tractor trailer on the lake, on the ice, and then people were having a pool as to when they thought it would melt enough that it would break through the ice. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, my husband entered, but he didn't win. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, actually, we saw our neighbors there. <laughs> so we, before the show, we went over to their table and said hi. But yeah, we didn't know they were going as well. Well, I said, any night I don't have to cook, I'm happy. I am the only one in my house who cooks, really. I mean, my son can make his own food, but he's pretty limited in <laughs> the number of dishes he makes. Yeah, I taught him how to make a few things. So you can make soup, mac and cheese, omelets, pancakes, yeah. Which is nice because that means, yeah, tonight I can just tell him, well, you're making your own dinner tonight. And he can have, but well, like I said, he's 17. I was cooking for my family by that age, so. Oh yeah, I taught him how to make spaghetti too. That was the first dish I ever learned to make, I think. not going to cooperate easily, is it? No. Too fluffy. <laughs> I don't like my thread anymore. <laughs> yeah, I broke myself of that habit. 
I do still hold needles in my mouth though, which I know I shouldn't, but I still do. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, I had a friend who said like she works in an ER and she's had to deal with people who accidentally swallow their inhaled their needle. Yeah. I had to go and they had to use a scope to pull it out. Ouch. Yeah, I had one time, I was at a friend's house and I was cross-stitching and her sister, her little sister says, why are you holding a needle in your mouth? I say, because I don't have three hands. <laughs> so yeah, again, the colors are going slanting that way. And rather than trying to force this to go in a diagonal the other way, I am just going to follow it with my modified color flow method. goes a little bit quicker. I still try to cl not close things in on all four sides, so it's still pretty neat. And then it means I don't have quite as many live needles to juggle, which is a good thing. Yeah, it's funny how like Somebody was saying, even with our modern day movies and everything, we still like to go see plays. There's something about a live story being performed in front of you, right? Yeah. Yeah, this one that we went to last year, they actually had microphones so you could hear well. Because some places they don't. They expect the actors to be able to project enough off the stage that you can still hear them. <laughs> yeah, they said it's often you can tell the difference in film, who started out on the stage and who didn't, because the people who started as stage actors are really good at enunciation. And yeah, I find I rarely have to look at the subtitles to figure out what they're saying. Like uh, Patrick Stewart, um, Avery Brooks, um, the actor who plays Stamets on Discovery. I can't remember his name. I had someone who said he overdoes it. I said, no, in a sea of actors who mumble, I said, I appreciate it. I always can hear what he's saying clearly. Yeah. I said, I kind of sometimes wish all actors got their start on the stage because... Yeah, I had people saying Avery Brooks who played um, Cisco on... Deep Space Nine, there was people who said he overacted, but I didn't get that impression. Yeah. And when that when he cries, I cry <laughs> on screen. Yeah. He's he's very good at that. I mean, I generally cry when anyone cries on screen, but not always. There's some actors who can provoke that response more easily than others. Okay. So yeah, this bit of ocean here peeking out under the under the leaf is easier to sort of slope my usual way as the colors are kind of going in stripes like that. And yeah. And then we'll come back up and start filling in some more. And soon it will be time to move my frame over again. Yeah, there were not as many colors in this area, so it went fairly quickly. So yeah, I didn't show you guys the very beginning of this pass. I had done it in between sessions, but I guess some people missed it. <laughs> I know a lot of people like to see the very beginning and the very ends of the passes. So I do try to save those for the sessions, but yeah, I had one where I had sort of just completed filming a session and the next day I finished up the, I finished up the pass and started a new one. So yeah, I didn't get it on camera that time. 
I didn't feel like swapping projects that day, so I didn't. And I'm gonna get a little less done over the summer because we're planning to do a bunch of house maintenance stuff. So I will try to produce my normal number of videos per week, but I won't get as much stitching done in between them because yeah, gotta, gotta finally replace the old carpet in here. I don't think that it was original to the house, but it is old because it was already fairly worn when we moved in in 2006, so yeah. It's uh, it's not good. There's a couple of places where fibers wore out so much that they got caught by my um, vacuum's power head and they pulled out like a run in a stocking. So, yeah. It started my son, on one of them, my son was kind of picking around at the fluff because he was like six or something and he didn't really know. And it pulled out and it came out and made a hole and he stuck a piece of duct tape over it. And he says, don't worry, mom, I accidentally made a hole in the carpet, but I fixed it, it's okay. <laughs> you know? And so I put a picture on Facebook. My uncle's like, yeah, it's barely noticeable. Good job. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, I tried to vacuum sort of around it, but yeah, once I got a little too close with the power head and once it grabbed that fiber, yeah, just went like another foot and that was it so yeah said so my carpet and my vacuum cleaner got into a fight and the vacuum cleaner won so yeah there's a couple places so we're gonna replace that so it's the hallway and then um all three bedrooms because our house has three bedrooms up one down and uh but it's such a pain to do when you still live here, right? It's so much easier to do when the house is empty. So we have to take everything out. Our son is going to have his bed in the living room for a few days. And we are going to sleep on the spare bed. We're going to disassemble ours and just put it in the laundry room. And all our stuff, because of course you have to take everything out of the closets as well. So you can replace the carpet underneath. So we got to do all that and get the carpet done and then put everything back. And then, yeah, my husband wants to finish because um, he redid our wiring in this house because uh, it was aluminum wiring and it's more prone to arcing and causing fires. There were, in fact, um, three houses on our street who have had fires from having that wiring. It was sort of like they said... It was the one year they were using aluminum instead of copper wiring and our house happened to be built that year and basically every other house on the street as well so yeah and so uh, my husband he's qualified electrician so he said okay we don't want to fire here too so <laughs> he he replaced it all but in order to do that in order to fish the wire through the walls you have to cut access holes right like he has a fishing thing that um, to help you pull the wire through, but you still do need holes to pull wires and cables through the walls. So yeah, they uh, like you cut out a panel and then we sort of just, you know, screwed it back in <laughs> afterwards. But I mean, it doesn't look nice, right? And we've been saying we got to get it done. So finally we have to properly re-mud around those, seal it in and then paint, so. Well, we were kind of waiting too because like all the paint was kind of wearing and you know when you have a little kid they're always running into it and picking at it and stuff and now that you know kiddo is almost an adult we don't have to worry about that anymore so yeah that's going to be a big a big undertaking unfortunately. So yeah we're going to do the carpets we're going to do all the painting in the bedrooms move everything back then we're going to have to take everything down off the living room walls and uh yeah do that the kitchen everything else where we had to cut access holes to do the do the wiring we're going to do that repaint all the baseboards yeah for now we're leaving the kitchen linoleum because it is a bit scratched up but it's still good it's not peeling anywhere making a trip hazard so we will just 
leave that for now. And we have hardwood in the living room, which does eventually need to be refinished. And there's a huge gouge in it, like the size of a quarter, and it's like deep, so that needs to be filled in. Right now, it's mostly covered by a big area rug, so eventually we're going to do that. But yeah, I get tired just thinking about it. <laughs> oh, oh, I think I miscounted here. Yes, I did. Ah, shoot. Okay, so that's one, and then there should be one. Oh, I should have. Okay, I see what I did. This is what I get for stitching and talking, right? I wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> Yeah, I am. Okay, that's all right. We will fix this. Although I say that, I still make mistakes even when I'm not talking with anyone. So it's not all your fault. <laughs> okay. Oop, darn it. I got one strand. Let's try that again. Okay. Both strands. Okay, so we need... Let's see. One, two, three, four... Next one is one over. The next one should be two over. Yeah, I did not count correctly. There we go. Okay. This ended up being not quite the way I wanted to stitch it. Next one overlaps by another stitch closer to the, there we go. Yeah, so been putting off all this upgrade stuff we want to do, but yeah, it really is past time we should have done it. Yeah, I said every time I hate when I have to clean the walls because the paint is so worn off that I said it reminds me how shabby things look. So, not the work involved, it's just, yeah. And I said I want to make sure we get a paint that's easier to wipe down because whatever they put on here, when they paint it, it's, yeah. You look at it wrong and it wears off. So... I said I hate it because I have the dilemma that like there's dust and you want to wipe the dust off but if you wipe it too hard it takes the paint right off so yeah either way it looks kind of ick so so yeah we've been putting off doing this for a long time we've been here like I said for oh it'll be 18 years this summer. Holy mackerel. <laughs> I always remember because I was pregnant when we moved, so it's one year older than our son is. Yeah. So he's 17. That means we've been here 18 years come this summer. So. Okay, so I did that. Then I did these. sure there wasn't an off back there but no that's a pin stitch end I was feeling so it's okay so yeah I will be very glad when that is all done yeah there was one wall we painted right when we moved in because our kitchen they had curtains that had red trim and then for some reason just one single wall was painted this bright pumpkin orange it's just like why the orange and the red really clashed badly and i don't know i wouldn't want pumpkin orange in my kitchen anyway any of my walls so yeah before we moved in my husband had a little bit of leftover paint he's just like yeah i'm painting over that with some some uh cream because yuck <laughs> so we did that we no longer have those curtains I eventually replace them when we replace the windows with some sheer gray ones and uh yeah 
Yeah, we have one wall too. When our kiddo was like four or five, he drew on the wall, but not with like a pen or anything. He pulled a tack out of the wall and he scratched a picture into the paint with a tack. It was like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, there was no buffing that out. Oh. And then it was sort of like, well, we can't be bothered to repaint just that one wall. So it's been sort of there since he did it. <laughs> Uh, yeah but yes yeah, it's, it's past due time to have it done so we're gonna do the painting like all the painting and the mudding and sanding and that we're gonna do ourselves but the carpet we're gonna pay somebody to put in because yeah carpet is a it's a big pain <laughs> Some things it's worth hiring someone to do for you. And that's one of them. Because, yeah, we we had carpet put downstairs when we were doing the um, entertainment and the spare room. And, uh, yeah, it was nice because it took the guy, you know, maybe three hours to do it and it was all done. So, yeah, just like when we got our windows replaced, we paid to have that done too. So... Yeah, because we had only single pane windows, which out here when it gets this cold is pretty darn useless. We would get ice sometimes up to four inches thick in the corners when it was minus 40. Yeah. And then it melts and it wrecks the, uh, you know, wrecks your drywall and stuff. I would put, um, what you might call it, towels out to, to absorb it. But yeah, we have one corner of one window. We have to actually completely replace the drywall because the water some of it actually managed to get inside between the uh, drywall and the vapor barrier and then the drywall got all yeah wrecked so we have to fix that too yeah it's just it's one of those things that once you do one thing you have to do a whole bunch of other things right it's like a domino thing and yeah We've been putting it off forever and we finally need to just get it done and be done with it so but yes yeah, home ownership you know I, I like that we have our home but it is a lot of maintenance you know like uh since we've been here we had to replace the furnace we had to replace the roof we had to replace the windows you know um had to replace the wiring and yeah, now we got to do this other stuff. And I mean, some of that stuff too, like, you couldn't put off. I mean, if you put off getting a roof, yeah, you could end up with a lot more problems than later on, right? That's one of those things you don't want to leave because, yeah, you could end up with a lot of water damage and you could get mold and you definitely don't want to deal with that. So, yeah. And like here, yeah, your furnace dies like you could freeze to death. So, yeah, we had it died one time, middle of the night. I think it was like minus 20. And uh, it would sort of run for a bit and then shut off and it wouldn't turn back on again. And so my poor husband, he had to set his alarm for like every hour. He'd have to go down and manually turn it back on, you know, so that we wouldn't freeze. The pipes wouldn't freeze. Yeah. We had electricity at the time. Our son was a baby. So we brought his crib into our room and we had electric um, space heaters going to keep our room warm. And then my husband would get the furnace to run just enough so that, yeah, the pipes wouldn't freeze because you definitely don't want that happening. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, or when we got our roof replaced, he did a lot of the work himself. And of course, after all the shingles and everything was stripped off and uh, waiting for like the next day, huge rainstorm came. And uh, so he had to buy this giant tarp to cover our house, which I didn't even know, you know, <laughs> they made tarps that big. And uh, so he was underneath the tarp because he was replacing the boards underneath that had water damage before they 
we're going to put the actual roof on. And uh, he had one of our friends, he came to help us too. And they were underneath and he said the wind came and blew and it like flattened the whole um, tarp with them under it. <laughs> And so he said, he kind of, they're just like plastered to the roof, looking at each other, just kind of laughing. Like they have to wait till the wind shifts before they can get up again. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Yeah, it's funny now, but at the time, yeah, it was definitely, oh. it was definitely not. Of course, you know, we planned to have it and the forecast said no rain. So of course it poured on us because, right, always the way. Oh. Yeah, our friends, they live just a couple blocks away, and uh, yeah, we help each other out when we need those kind of things, so it's all, it all works out good. He helped them put their furnace in, too, after we did ours, so yeah. And then we just had to have it inspected afterwards, and then, yeah, that was done, so... Yeah, I told my husband, I'm really glad he's he's very handy because it's saved us a lot. We haven't had to hire people to do very much. He does a lot of it himself, so. Yeah, the things we found doing renos in the house, my husband found in one in the laundry room behind some drywall, there was a spare piece somebody had just broken in half and shoved in there and a whole bunch of just like yeah gravel and stuff like they couldn't be bothered to sweep it and take it out they just like swept it into the wall and then drywalled over it like nice guys <laughs> oh dear yeah yeah that's one of the things with home ownership our first house we were getting ready to sell it and move so that we could be closer to my husband's new job. And uh, then there was a huge rainstorm in our area. And that was when we discovered that they said the um, we had a fireplace in that house and that the chimney cap was not properly um, sealed. And I guess it had been okay before because they'd never had a rainstorm like that. So it had never been a problem, but that one was just like, yeah, it was a deluge. Like when, um, I looked outside, there was water pouring off like a waterfall out of the gutters, even though the gutters were not, um, they weren't full. My husband had cleaned them like a couple weeks before, but there was so much water that it just couldn't keep up. And uh, yeah, like it was pouring out of the gutter drain, but also over the side of the gutter because it just couldn't keep up with it. And uh, so the water came in all down the... Uh, the chimney filled up the whole vapor barrier and uh, I discovered I was downstairs and I felt this drip on my head and was like okay that's not supposed to happen <laughs> and uh yeah the uh called the insurance they sent over some guys who had this um this detector that they could put it against the drywall and it could detect if there was moisture behind and yeah they said like it just it's it went off and yeah when they cut open the wall the whole thing was just soaked all the insulation and everything was was full of water and so they had to uh drain that and then they had to put a, a dehumidifier to run for like a week so yeah it was running and then it had this huge long um pipe that would go into the sink and that went for like a week until it dried all of that out and yeah, so I said I couldn't sit in the living room because if you sat there, it was drying you out too, right? You get so thirsty and dehydrated, so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, they did that and they they uh, fixed it all up and then we put it on the market. But yeah, that was a pain. That took like another four months because the problem was, of course, the uh, that storm didn't affect just us, right? Everybody practically had water damage that had to be seen too, so yeah the most severe of course got seen to first and yeah we had to uh had to uh wait our turn so yeah it was kind of a pain too because right when we did that there was a huge rise in prices and so 
yeah. It was okay time to sell, but not a great time to have to buy, right? So, yeah. We were actually really lucky to get this house because at the time, the housing was very scarce even to buy, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we put the first offer in, the, in on this house and it got accepted, so we were pretty lucky <laughs> because uh, they were going to have an open house sort of the next day, I think. And our realtor managed to get us in first and we got in to put in the first offer and luckily they they just wanted to sell it and they weren't going to deal with anyone getting into bidding wars so yeah so the house wasn't perfect exactly what we wanted but it was good it's a good house and i'm happy with it so Like my husband was hoping for an attached garage. He was hoping for a two car garage, not just a one, which is what we have is one detached, but you know, you make it work. And we've had good neighbors, you know, it's been a good area to live in, which is something you never can be quite sure of right before you move in. So yeah, yeah, it was nice. Right when we were moving in, we had some neighbors who came over to say hi so we've been friends with them since day one that we moved in. <clears throat> yeah, their daughter uh, babysat our son a couple times too. <laughs> Which was, yeah, kind of nice because then that meant, you know, her parents were right there if there was any emergency too and they couldn't get a hold of us so yeah we didn't go out for very much though he was a pretty fussy guy when he was little so yeah and we're both kind of homebodies so it wasn't too hard for us okay so quite right which is why it didn't disappear into the fabric the way I there it probably wouldn't matter too much because it's going to be stitched over and I don't think those colors are too pale but I figured might as well fix it so we'll go back here and carry on So I've got the leaf colors kind of go this way, then the C is going to come back this way, and then the flower is going to kind of curve that way. So, well, I think I'm going to sort of finish, yeah, up to about here, and I'll probably move the frame again and go back up to the top. We shall see. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, bye. the fabric and didn't quite go back down where it came up which means the loop won't pop to the back the way I want it to there so yeah still trying to work out from these grow out from these edges without closing things in
Yeah, seeing as my turn to go because, uh, yeah, last year's Christmas party was not my turn. <laughs> so, yeah. And then there's a Health Foundation Gala coming up, I think, next month. And it'll be my turn to go because the last couple of galas I didn't get to. Yeah. Like I said, they buy they get enough for the employees, it's like table of ten or something. And uh, yeah. And then we all take turns who gets to who gets to show up <laughs> for their plus ones. Not everybody gets a plus one, they have to take turn who gets it, so which I understand. <clears throat> Yeah, and then it'll be my um, my niece's wedding too. Holy cow, that's coming up to on us. So, yeah. Jeez, it seems like just yesterday she was born. Obviously not. <laughs> oh yeah, this is an old color I've had for a while. It's still used to be on a bobbin, so it's got a lot of kinks in it. Well, some of my thread I've had since, sheesh, high school, so I've had for almost 30 years. Yeah. And yeah, if it sits on a bobbin for 30 years, those uh, those kinks in it are, are going to stick around. It was only, I think, two or three years ago that I changed how I store my my thread and I went through and unwound all my bobbins and put them into envelopes. Yeah, I sort of, I did bobbins because that's what they tell you to do. I never really thought of any other way to do it. And then, yeah. And then I kind of saw other people's ideas and thought, yeah, I like that better. Ooh. Goodness, pardon me. I actually slept okay, but yeah. Yawns are plaguing me today. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping that the sun was going to come out, but those clouds look like they're here to stay today. Yeah, I think I can actually, this weekend, I might dare to uh, wash all the mittens and scarves and things because I think we're done. I've been using just my spring jacket the last couple of weeks when I go out for a walk, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was like minus two. And I put on my winter coat. And by the time I got home, I was sweating. So I went, yeah. Shouldn't have done that, so. to hang on for dear life. Oh. Really? You're gonna be like that, huh? Okay, there we go. Okay. again. I mean, I was trying to re-thread it. The fibers were shredding apart. That's no good either.
this color in this area. So I'm gonna see if I wanted to take it up from my working tray, but no. entire big strand tie itself into a knot but it's able to undo it <clears throat> yeah so when we finish doing the work in our house if everything repainted i probably won't hang up our photos as much because i'm going to be filling in the the walls with my uh cross stitch projects so yeah i got myself a an electronic picture frame and i loaded the pictures in there so it cycles through them randomly so we'll still have the pictures on display yeah just not in standard frames because yeah our walls are pretty full <laughs> Although I'm thinking this one I'm stitching right now might go in the hallway. Because uh, I have a couple Thomas Kincaid ones planned that I'm going to put in the living room, sort of on either side of the TV, probably. So. Yeah, I'm lucky that I have a fair amount of wall space, so. <laughs> yeah, I know there was someone who's saying that they had to, um, they would rotate what pictures they had out because they had too many cross-stitch projects and not enough wall space. So they keep them, they're all framed and they keep them in the closet. And then every couple of months they would, yeah, swap them around. There was one lady who said she just doesn't even frame hers. She rolls them up and keeps them in a closet because uh, she doesn't have room to display them, but the stitching them is the, yeah, is the important part to her, so. Yeah, I have a bunch of old cross-stitch magazines that I should probably pass on to someone else who will enjoy them because, yeah, I don't really, I only stitch full coverage now and only stuff that I can use with Pattern Keeper. I don't stitch from paper anymore, so, <laughs> yeah. I have to really like a design if I'm going to be willing to stitch it from paper again because I have been spoiled.
Yeah, so I looked up further in this uh, pass. There's going to be a lot of stuff slanting the other way because of the way the, the peacock is standing. Yeah, his chest goes that way. All his feathers go that way. So, yeah, I will not be stitching in a diagonal this direction. I think I might leave that for a bit. Come back over to this corner here and start working out again. Yeah. sort of work up to the edge of this leaf and not work into the ocean color again for a bit.
And I tip back over into the corner again. Goodness, my fridge is being noisy. <laughs>
little bit of confetti here. can be frustrating to sort of just do one stitch of a color, but I figure I either do it at the end or I do it during. The nice thing about, you know, completing them as I come across them means I don't have to search out for them later and fill them in later. Yeah, I had a couple times on projects that I stitched before I stitched um, parking where uh, I would be taking the grid lines out and discover a dozen stitches or so that I completely missed. Yeah. I found one that I missed after I'd washed it and then ironed it and everything too, so. So yeah, that's one thing I like is when I reach the edge of a section, I know all the stitches in between are done. There's no ones, missing ones hiding for me to try to find later. Okay, I did all those little ones just so I could do all these in a row. And I could decide there's sort of one down here by itself. I could decide to sort of skip and do that one out of order. However, I know that I have a short piece that'll be good for just one stitch of this color. So I'm going to do that, that single one by itself when I get to it using that leftover bit of thread. Could decide to do it with this thread if you wanted to as well. That is no problem, however you like to do it. In the end, it will all look the same <laughs> with the front.
So this color here, I decided I'm going to branch one off and go this way, and I'm going to branch another one off and go the other side of the leaf, rather than trying to do it all with one thread. Since the shape is like this, I'm going to end up with some stitches closed in on three sides, no matter which one I do first. So, one I said I would do, a little leftover piece. Closing in on 200. So why don't we stitch to 200? Nice round number to stop on. So that leaf is almost completely filled in. Oh dear. Wow, really? Ah, deal with it later. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, and then start another thread. This will actually bring us to exactly 200 stitches. There. Perfect. 
Yes, exactly 200. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here next time. Thanks everyone.